Hello and welcome to Redemption Church Craig Event Online. My name is Sarah and I'm a social worker and this here is Ellie and she's a professional sleeper and chaser of toys. She's my special guest today and she's going to help me welcome you all to Redemption Church Online. We are a gospel-centred Anglican church in Craigieburn in Melbourne's North. In the video today, you'll watch and hear the Bible being read. If you've got kids present, there'll be a kids talk for them to watch. And we'll listen to a short talk on how to not have your joy go up and down like a yo-yo. After the video, grab a quick cup of coffee or tea and at 4.20pm, click on the link in the description below to join us on Zoom for singing, to pray together and to continue the conversation. If you're a visitor today, we'd love to meet you there. See you on the other side. Bye. Hey guys, my name's Maddie and I'm a member of Redemption Church in Craigieburn. And I'm actually a teacher. So I teach primary school at the moment. And that is kind of making me a little bit worried a little bit stressed because of this whole coronavirus situation and I imagine it might be making a lot of people a bit stressed as well and something I was thinking about was that Jesus encourages us not to worry not about coronavirus not about anything not even about tomorrow so we're gonna have a look and see what Jesus had to say about worry this is thankful don't worry this is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. Jesus did many amazing things. He taught everyone about God's love, healed people from their sickness, and even calmed storms. One day, Jesus was speaking to thousands of people. Hey, Jesus! When someone asked him about money, he told them a story and tried to explain to the people that our treasure is not on earth, but in heaven. Then he turned to one of his disciples and said, That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food to eat or enough clothes to wear, for life is more than food and your body more than clothing. Uh, yes. Look at the ravens. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns because God feeds them and you are far more valuable to God than any birds. Uh, yeah, I think so. Do you think that by worrying about anything, you can add a single moment to your life? And if worry can't do a little thing like that, what's the use of worrying over bigger things? That's a good point. Look at all the lilies and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon, the great king of Israel, in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for flowers that are here today and thrown away tomorrow, He will certainly care for you. And don't worry about what to eat or what to drink. Hey, okay. Many people worry about these things, but God already knows what you need. Seek the kingdom of God above all else, and He will give you everything you need. So don't be afraid, for it makes God happy to take care of you and give you His kingdom. So share what you have with others and give to those who need. There you go. Thank you. Sorry, hi. Then you'll be storing up treasure in heaven. And when your treasure is in heaven, it's going to be safe. No thief can steal it. And no bug can destroy it. Man, whatever. Wherever your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Wow, how cool that God cares for all the birds and all the flowers. And you and I are so much more precious to him than all of that. He is glad to care for us. What an awesome reminder. Jesus said, our treasure is in heaven. We don't need to worry about what we have now or what's going to happen tomorrow. Instead, Jesus said to seek the kingdom of God. This means that instead of worrying, we can be kind and generous to everyone around us. 
not just our friends and our family, but to everyone around us. Because we know that God loves everybody and he will take care of us. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 34, do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will worry about itself. It's a great reminder, isn't it? Let us pray and we can ask God to help us to do that, even in this crazy coronavirus time that we are living in. Dear God, I thank you that you care for us and that you love looking after us. Please help us not to worry about tomorrow, but to trust in all of your promises. Amen. Hi everyone, my name is Debbie. Today's Bible reading is from Psalm found in the Old Testament, and I'll be reading the New International Version. Psalm 122, a song of ascents of David. I rejoice with those who said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing in your gates, Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built like a city that is closely compacted together. That is where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, to praise the name of the Lord according to the statute given to Israel. There stand the thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure. May there be peace within your walls and security within your citadel. For the sake of the family and friends, I will say, peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord, our God, I will see Hi, my name is Akil Garden. I'm the pastor of Redemption Church, Craigieburn. If you're like me and you're in Melbourne this week, you might know that it's a warm and sunny and a beautiful September so far, give or take a few days. And I bet there are many of you who are feeling the itch for these restrictions to be over and done with and for us to be out and about doing what we love to do. As we Melburnians move forward to that day when we can step out into the light without restrictions, there is a great sense of anticipation as we see that day getting closer and closer, as we look at the signposts along the way that indicate to us, yes, we are getting closer and closer to that day. I don't know about you, but there has been this sense of excitement and anticipation rising up and bubbling up within me as we get closer and closer to that day, to that day that we've all been looking forward to. As we see it getting closer and closer, the anticipation and the excitement rise and we find ourselves in these moments where we're looking forward and anticipating something, where we start to tell one another, here are the things I'm looking forward to when things open up. Uh, these are the things I want to be doing. These are the things I want to be going to experience. These are the places I want to go and eat X, Y, or Z. These are the people I want to have over in my home. And we start to put words to our longings and our desires and the things we're anticipating as, as we remind one another, hey, that day is getting closer. We will soon be where we want to be. It's one of those instinctive ways that humans keep hope alive. We put words to our anticipations and our desires for the future. Well, the psalm today, Psalm 122, echoes much of those sentiments that we've just spoken of. The pilgrims, the worshippers spoken of and speaking in this psalm on their way into Jerusalem to worship at the temple, remind one another about all of the good things in store in Jerusalem for them. And they're stirring up hope and joy and anticipation as they journey to the temple. Now, there's nothing wrong with looking forward to good things in the here and now. But inherently, there's a problem with this picture uh, even in our situation in Melbourne, and I wonder if you can spot it. When our hope is in the flourishing and the freedom of a particular city, we are automatically setting ourselves up for disappointment. Because a city, as huge and stable and as solid as, as it may seem, is actually fragile and fluctuating and in flux as we've discovered in the last six months in our city. 
Do you want your ultimate hope and joy to be tethered to something that goes up and down like a yo-yo? Do you want your joy and your hope to be tethered to something that comes and goes like the weather? And particularly us in Melbourne, we know what that means. My guess is probably not. When we come to this Psalm 122, and we ask of it, what must I do? When we put on our gospel lenses to look at this psalm, this psalm goes even further. This psalm compels us not to put our hope in temporary things, like a city, but to put our hope in God himself, who is eternal. Well, coming to Psalm 122, we put ourselves in the shoes and the time and the place where the people of God had a prescribed place to meet with God. The city of Jerusalem was the city where God had placed his name. And in that city, there was a place, a particular place, the temple, the place where the manifest glory and presence of God's name resided and rested. If you were a God-worshipping Israelite in the time of King David and King Solomon, particularly who built the temple, Jerusalem was the city to be in. And the place in Jerusalem to be, if you were a God-worshipping Israelite, was the temple, the heartbeat of that city. Just hear this description of what Jerusalem meant to the worshipping Israelite of that time. That's described in the middle of the psalm. Jerusalem is built like a city that is closely compacted together. That is where the tribes go up. The tribes of the Lord go up to praise the name of the Lord according to the statutes given to Israel. There stand the thrones of judgment. There sit the thrones of the house of David. And so this song of ascent, which simply means a song you would sing on your way up to the temple, this song captures that joy and that delight that the people of God would experience and would stir up in one another by speaking to one another about the things they were looking forward to as they journeyed to the temple, God's city and God's place. You know, you know this, when you hop in a car, and back in the day when you could imagine hopping in a car to go on a road trip, you had your destination in mind, you had your family in the car, and the anticipation would fill and flood the vehicle as people would talk about the things they were looking forward to doing when you arrived at your destination. The memories would come flooding back. You would see the different landmarks along the journey that would remind you that you are getting closer to your destination. And it's as if as you speak of those experiences and see the signposts and you build up this anticipation, it's as if the joy and the experience of the future just seems to flood into the car into the present. Well, it's a bit like how this psalm begins, is like children on a road trip telling one another about what they're looking forward to and getting excited about it. So the children of God in this psalm are super excited to be journeying to the temple of the Lord, the house of God, and the joy and anticipation floods them from the future into the present. Read these words in verse 1. I rejoiced when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing in your gates, Jerusalem. The psalm writer's response to this invitation of, Come, let's go to the house of the Lord. His response is rejoicing. I was glad. I was happy. I rejoiced when they said, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Because something of that future destination comes flooding into the present for the psalm writer, and he is filled with joy. And here's what some of the worshippers are anticipating and praying for as they journey up to the temple. They pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure. May there be peace within your walls and security within your citadels or towers. For the sake of my family and friends, I will say, peace be within you, Jerusalem. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity, Jerusalem. Praying for security, praying for peace or prosperity and flourishing sounds a lot like some of the things we might be praying for our great city, Melbourne, right now. And it is totally right that we should seek God for those sorts of things here and now. Security, peace, flourishing of humans. Seek the welfare 
the flourishing of the city that we are living in, we're told and instructed in scripture. But we know even from history that this great and glorious and grand city of Jerusalem is both the most blessed city on earth and at the same time the city of greatest troubles. Jerusalem, this glorious city, has been built and destroyed and rebuilt several times. This great city of Jerusalem has been occupied after one tribe of person after the other, one type of person after the other. Jerusalem has been destroyed several times. And so we come full circle right to where we began. Cities, these great, glorious, grand things. Jerusalem, great, glorious, grand city. None of these last forever. Their glories and grandeur and greatness fade and crumble. Tethering your hope and your joy to something that doesn't last forever is to set yourself up for disappointment. So the psalm reminds us, as we look through the lens of the gospel, not to put our hope in temporary things like a city, but to put our hope in God himself, who is eternal. Well, what is the greatest hindrance when it comes to putting our hope in God rather than temporary things? Well, our greatest hindrance is that we are so driven by what we can see and what we can sense and what we can feel and what we can touch. We are so driven by senses. We latch on to things that we can see and touch and things that give us an immediate feeling. It's so tempting to put our hope and joy, even in Melbourne right now, in the state of how things are going to play out in the next four or five or six to eight weeks, isn't it? We put all our hope eggs in the baskets of the time-bound, of the tangible, of the temporary, like a city, or our employment status, or our bank account balances, or a particular significant relationship, you name it, we just have plenty of straw baskets that we even manufacture so that we can place our hope in, simply because they're quick and tangible and give us an immediate feeling of some sort. And when the baskets fall, which they invariably and inevitably do, and those baskets crumble, so too our hope and joy shatter with it. Yet we are promised in the Bible that the kind of hope we are called to have in God does not disappoint. You see, because God sent his own son to become one who would be put to death, who would be torn apart and broken like a conquered city, to show us in his body on the cross what putting our hope and trust in the flesh looks like. He takes all of that misplaced hope and trust and shows us, shows us where it actually ends. It ends in destruction. It ends in death. And his body, that temple, was broken and destroyed and plunged into darkness. And his disciples are watching all of this and they could be thinking so easily, we have put our hope in this basket. We have put our worship in this temple. We have put our faith in this city. And now he is dead. But the story doesn't end there. Jesus promised that on the third day, he would rise again. And he did rise again. He was raised by the greatness and the glory and grandeur of God's power. And he was raised as the new temple who could never be destroyed ever again. The new temple, the place where all of God's people by faith would come to worship. Day or night, no curfew, no restrictions. All who had faith in the Son of God would be free to enter. And that hope does not disappoint. And as if that were not enough, Jesus goes even further. He doesn't just give us a place to meet with God, but he gives us a context to place that hope. He promises us a hope of a future city, a city that cannot be destroyed, a city whose gates are never closed for trade or for business, a city one we can truly hope in, an eternal city 
the new Jerusalem that will one day come down from heaven, from the presence of God. And all who trust in Christ, all who put their hope in Christ, all who find their joy in Christ, will be able to enter into that city one day. And will say to one another, I was glad, I rejoiced, I was overjoyed, I was happy when they said to me, come let us go into the house of God. And we will say to one another, there is no temple in that city because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. To the degree we believe in that indestructible city, that never to be destroyed temple, the presence of God, the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb himself, as we put our faith and our trust and our hope in that basket that can never crumble, as we see the permanence of Jesus' promises of that future city, as we see the preciousness of the promise of access to the fullness of the presence of God in which there is fullness of joy, as we are captured by these truths, as we are captured by the glory and the grandeur and the greatness of our God who makes these promises, we put our hope and our trust and our faith in God and his future promises. And so as we live in anticipation of that day that is to come, as we journey to that day, to that glorious city and that glorious place of permanent, uninterrupted, never ending glorious worship of our God, as we head to that day, we must speak to one another and remind one another of that day that is to come and maybe like those children in the car heading to their favorite destination, something of the glory of that future will come into today and sustain our hope and sustain our joy in the Lord. Amen.